So welcome to my talk, Sustainable Database Performance Profiling in Postgres, a very handy title and I want to integrate some kind of sustainable because it's, it's good for, uh, these days. Uh, my name is Dirk Krautschik, like Flor mentioned, I'm a solution architect with Ivan. I'm doing databases all over for 16 years now. It was about DBA, trainer, consultant, sales engineering. And it started with Oracle, dark history, right? And um, later on, I just doing Postgres and using the Oracle know-how just for purposes, right? Some private information if you want to have an icebreaker talking to me outside. Um, short disclaimer, this talk is uh, supposed to be for a different audience, not only Postgres, also Oracle people. So there's maybe you mentioned, you will feel kind of a comparison thing in there. So it's my opinion, it's based on my experience. So always open for discussion and be open-minded. Um, some words about the history of this talk. What happened so far? You know, when you are a speaker sometimes, or even when you are a singer, you have this kind of song or talk you have to give so many times. It get, got accepted on so many conferences and you got sick of it. There was kind of a talk which was called Proactive Performance Analysis in Postgres. There's a pretty bad video over there, but uh, that's basically the content of the talk. You can watch it if you want. And uh, it was about performance analysis overall in Postgres with some approaches, different extensions, all that kind of stuff. The, the reason of this talk is the feedback was fine. Uh, there was many consensus when I had discussions afterwards. And uh, again, sick of giving the talk all the time. Um, and there was always the question, what did you show there at the end of the talk? And that is basically the topic of today. Um, so it was my motivation to do a spin-off. Performance problems. Um, just one question, who is uh, supposed to be a DBA in this room? Nice. <laughs> Anyone else is a developer, I guess, or something like this, right? Okay, that's fine. Um, in Postgres, if you are doing performance analysis, everything is there for now. So if you have just, just investigate, you, you are querying the obvious uh, sources like parameters, the sizing, the in things in the information scheme, all this kind of stuff. The challenge is how to handle all this information and how to keep that stuff, actually. So, you know, you can always investigate only on this particular time in Postgres. That's the problem. These slides here where I mentioned recap are basically uh, something what I did in the, in the last talk, but I used this actually to, to refresh everything and to give you some foundation about what I want to do today. Um, then everyone is talking about, yeah, you can use monitoring. Yeah, monitoring is essential. Monitoring is fine, that's true. But uh, most of the time it shows only that something is slow. And maybe if you're lucky, what is exactly slow, but almost never why it's slow. That's a problem. So you need monitoring, yes, that's correct. But it will not help me in my performance analysis situation right now. So you need to do a deep dive, you need to go further with an investigation and all this kind of stuff. Then, of course, you can do logging. Postgres logging is pretty cool. So you can almost log everything if you don't know that. But log files are not getting uh, smaller when you are activating everything. It's easy, you can just switch everything on and you will see log files incredibly uh, large, right? So it can help you, but the log file handling is probably then difficult. And you know, storage, performance of the storage, all this kind of stuff. You have a lot of caveats. So I use logging all the time, but just for particular situations. So it will not help me overall when I try to investigate performance problems. Then the o first obvious choice is, yeah, no, PG start statements. Yeah, I know, PG start statements is uh, the first thing to choose if you want to make it more, a little bit sustainable. So you just collect, aggregated the statements with some information about uh, run times, uh, fetch blocks, all this kind of stuff. Um, and it's also required by several monitoring tools. So it's, it's essential to activate PG start statements but it's not perfect. So you can just try something like this, that query I've stolen from Hans, from Cybertech, so full disclosure, right? But it's a good example how you can use uh, 
um, PG start statements, just to get an overview of what kind of statements are making the trouble or making the load on the database. Um, the thing is, you have only this kind of a ring buffer situation, so it will never uh, relate to the particular time when something happens. So when you get and, and someone is calling you, performance issues for some time, it's difficult to switch over to this view. It will help, but it will not uh, probably get you the right information on the right time. Um, then there's also pgstart car cache, which is, which is a storage-based uh, addition to pgstart statements. So it makes sense to add it here in what I want to do today. But obviously, um, that is just more information with the same way to go like pgstart statements. And what's still missing? And now there is a little bit dark soul in me. Wake events. The most underestimated thing in Postgres, and when you are coming from Oracle, Oracle guys love wait events, right? Um, because it is a way different approach to investigate performance issues. Uh, wh when, you no when you do not have the particular statement what is causing your issue. So if someone is telling you it is something slow, what query? I don't know. So you can just check the actual wait events. In Postgres, the wait events are there for now, right? You have to collect them. So what is my extension of choice is PG wait sampling. I will not go into much detail about this, just to show you that it's just an extension collecting all these wait events from the PG start activity and put it somewhere. So it's a really good thing. And you can, even not knowing what kind of uh, statement is troubling you, you can get something like this which will lead you to maybe an issue like storage I.O. speed whatsoever, right? Just an example what you can get out of it. So you get just a collection of the wait event related to the query, related to time, related to the process ID. Very useful. So now getting sustainable. Let's pick a random example. Let's say Oracle. Um, Oracle is per default collecting everything, all the performance information, so the whole different thing like uh, Postgres. So all performance data is there, even when you're not activating it or using it, some, you know. You can obviously query those data, but there's also a thing like um, using, making reports out of the data. You can also activate more features with some extension, not extensions, more like an additional package you can uh, buy for a little bit of money, and you have more uh, more uh, toolings about this data. But the idea is Oracle is collecting everything and making, putting everything in a kind of a repository. So it's not collecting all this data without any order, it's just uh, collecting it properly. And it's doing snapshots or samples. I will today mix up snapshot and sample all the time, so it's the same. Um, so you're collecting the data and you will create samples or snapshots, and then you can create reports between each sample or snapshot, right? So that is an approach which is very useful when you are, when you are having some kind of a dark history like I have, right? So Oracle people are always investigating like this. So that is actually a good idea. So we need that too. But you know, getting reports out of something, then all the people are crying, ah, there's PG Badger. Yes, PG Badger is a really nice tool, but it's also relying on logging, right? So if you are happy with creating a real load of log files, creating those reports, it's also not exactly the same, but a similar approach having a uh, report-based analysis from a particular time. So, recommended, but it's not what I want to have, right? So, again, the idea, getting sustainable. With every extension I mentioned before, there's a configuration which is based on a, on a ring buffer. So you're just getting like 5,000 queries, and when it, you have more, then it starts over and over again. So you have almost kind of a, a, a frame of statements, and you have to get something in order, right? If you want to collect more than, let's say, a few days, 
You never know where, in which position of this ring buffer you are. So and then you activate several extensions with this concept. So the ring buffers are not synchronous. So you never know PG weight sampling, PG start car cache. You know, no, you never know where they are. So you, you need to have this information collected somewhere else in kind of a repository. And where you can actually order it, use it, put a, a time-based relation on this. That is the basic idea of what we want to do. And there is an extension for a while now called PG Profile. This is the extension I mentioned in the last part of my old talk. You know, showing this an, as an example, and everyone in the audience was making, what's this? No, no one knows, right? And the Oracle people are actually were crying. We need this, right? <laughs> so so what, is, what is PG Profile actually doing? You know, you, you have a collection at the moment. This is uh, the Postgres default stuff, what you can collect, the system catalog, information scheme, all this kind of stuff, and PG start car cache, PG start statements, and PG weight sampling. All of them or partial. If you don't have PG weight sampling running on your system, no matter. No, just PG probably will collect what is there. And then you get something like this. You know, it's just an example. I will show an actual report later. Um, you know, you can create th those uh, snapshots out of it, and you can create report for a particular time. And then you get a nice HTML base, something like this, and uh, you can use it for the investigation. Pretty nice. So what's in the report? Just shortly, uh, overall statistics, statistics for each uh, SQL statement, uh, weight event statistics, all this kind of stuff. I will show it later in the report, just for completion. And it's open source, of course, right? So it's developed by Andre, a Russian fellow, and uh, it's there for a while, right? So it's five years old now, and I'm really Im impressed how less people are know that extension, actually. And um, it's proper maintained. I just put the screenshot on GitHub, you know, that you see there's actually someone working on this. And um, it's pure PLP GSQL based. That is the beauty for some code monkeys like me. I don't know about developing, but I know that, and I can actually follow what's happening in the extension, which is pretty neat for me. And yeah, the architecture is uh, straightforward. So it's just a, re a historic repository database. So you need to have, of course, a database somewhere to collect all this stuff, obviously, right? And it will all grab all the information from, P from the extensions and from the uh, Postgres clusters. And there are some packages with some functions, PL, PG, SQL functions to handle, to activate, to configure all this uh, uh, profiling and report cre creation. And it doesn't matter where you just put your repository database, right? So at the end, it sh uh, you can collect from everywhere. You are able to connect. You only need the dblink <coughs> extension. I will mention that later. And uh, you can put the PG profile extension and the database in a separate database if you want. So if you want to just to cut it from the production databases or something like this, right? So it's all possible. And then you create reports out of it. There are two ways of creating reports. A regular one, you know, you're creating this sample, snapshots, whatsoever. And then you just say, uh, I want to have a report from this time to this time. Could be also more like uh, from one to five, depends on the time frame you want to investigate in. And you can also do, a, which is pretty useful, a differential report. So you can just choose two time frames and you get everything out of it in one report next to each other. If you want to have, for, for instance, uh, customers calling yesterday at one o'clock, everything was slow. The day before, everything was fine. So you can just create a report from yesterday and the day before from this particular hour, and you have both in one report and you can compare, right? So what kind of statements were running, what, what was the situation, maybe parameter changes, you don't know. So that is the basic situation. What you need as a prerequisite is uh, the dblink extension. And uh, yeah, you don't need to have it, but the extensions of choice you want to uh, have in the report, right? The information. 
Lately, you can install it with a, with a, re with a regular uh, repositories. That's nice. When I gave this talk last time, it was not there. So you can get it directly from GitHub. But now, obviously, choose the repository way to install it. And then the only thing you need to do is create, yeah, you don't have to, but I would uh, recommend to create an own scheme for this PG profile, maybe in, in a separate database that's of your, that's, uh, your choice. And then create the extension PG profile in their scheme and uh, the extension DB link, and then you're good to go. For configuration, it's only related to you know PG start statements, weight sampling, car cache, to put it in the, in the uh, shared preload libraries, and it's recommended, not essential, to activate track activities, track counts, all this kind of stuff to have, let's say, the best experience of the report. But again. When it's not activated, when the extensions are not there, you also can create reports, of, but with less information. So it will work, actually. There are also optional uh, parameters for PG profile as well. Maybe for the retention, if you want to get rid of old snapshots and all this kind of stuff. Or you can cut the queries for uh, when you don't want to have the full queries in the report. You can cut it to some kind of uh, configuration. All not uh, necessary, but just to keep in mind that there are ways to configure PG profile as well. And you should think about uh, the uh, configuration of each extension you are using. So PG profile will handle uh, the content of PG start statements, for example. But um, if you make f create, for for instance, every hour in snapshot and you have a ring buffer with 5,000, and this uh, ring buffer size is not enough even in this hour, you have to increase it as well. So that is something you have to find out for yourself to make sure that you will not have kind of a gap in the repository. Right? Makes sense, I guess, right? So um, I will switch to some demo to actually show you some console stuff as well. So, no magic, just um, Postgres 16 running over there, or not. <laughs> 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 Let me just <laughs> give it. Derek, can you zoom in a little bit? Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> zoom is. What is zoom in? Ah, that's zoom. I'm a Mac user for some weeks now, so uh, <laughs> please don't bear with me. And no, it looks better, right? So cool. So I'm just dropping all what's existing. So nothing magic here. I created the uh, scheme profile, like in the, ex in the example from the slides, right? And I have activated those extensions. DBLink, PG Profile, PGSAT Karke, Statement, Sampling, you know, also here, no magic. So now you can just select this is all kind of uh, uh, functions, right? P P P PG, PL, PL, PG, SQL, you know what I mean, right? Uh, functions. <laughs> and um, you can just query it, and then you get. I have actually configured one. Can you see it? Actually, it's down below. Uh, one server is already configured, and I have created some reports. You know, the, the rows are mixed up because floor cannot see the size of the server. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you get the point, right? So you, you have uh, the, uh, uh, the several uh, snapshots or samples I have already created. Now I just create another server, a Postgres 15, somewhere else. You know, the usual connection string, there's also no magic. Now I have the server there, and um, you can just now create snapshots or samples, right? Samples is the right word. <laughs> so I just create samples for every server now, but you can also do for particular servers. I will do this for a few times. You know, that doesn't make sense, but you usually make, uh, keep a little bit of time between, but for example now, now yeah, you could see for the particular server, I have created five samples. The sample at the first, where I created for everyone, and four times uh, for the uh, server itself. 
Now we have reports, uh, samples, sorry. Um, you can also create baselines. I will mention that in the slide as well. So you, you will get the, uh, the commands all in the slides when you download the slides. And the baseline is actually nothing more than if you make or have a situation, a performance problem, or make a benchmark, and you want to tag these uh, samples with a name. For example, um, you know, I created um, in this example a, a baseline on the server core 15, which was called PG Bench Run, and it was between sample one and sample two. And then you have basically uh, just an information about what, what happens there. If you have a performance problem and you don't want to uh, get, keep the, the numbers in your mind, just give it a name, create a baseline, and you will never forget. Right? So creating a report is actually uh, also a command uh, profile get report something. Um, I will do that outside out of, PL, PL, uh, out of uh, PSQL to get it directly in an HTML. If you do it internally, you just have to cut and paste the HTML stuff that, that doesn't make sense, right? So go outside, just make a PSQL and put, put it out to an HTML file. There's a report, nothing magic. And you can also do a differential report, which is just called diff report. And you just go first one and the second one. And then you get the both reports. And if you want to have this automate, auto, uh, if you want to get the samples done automatically, I would recommend to put it in a cron job. And um, like here, I think it's not. You can use every half an hour, for example, right? And um, then you get to have your sn uh, sn snapshot samples all the time. And you can also query the um, actual amount, what is PG profile creating in, on data. So just to, to, to monitor how large the profile schema will be, but honestly, it's okay. So even when you're doing a lot of samples, uh, it is not critical high. So it's not, no, not that I have to be take care about terabytes of data when you just keep it running. Thanks. Um, and then I've created these reports, right? Um, that's it, like here. So now we have a report. That is, I hope that this is large enough. I think it has to be large, right? So maybe like this. You know, you have this content thing. I will just put it away with here, with the button. So it's pretty nice. You can just filter something. You can uh, jump to the things. But you know, overall, that is a report uh, for the Postgres 16. It's not the report I have created f in, the, in, the, in the demo on the console, because there's no nothing happens happening there. I have uh, used to uh, I have used some PG Bench uh, uh, runs to have at least a little bit content in this report. You get the information about uh, the report uh, with the start ID, end ID, and the particular time. You know, it was a few days ago in the middle of the night, as usual, uh, for ten minutes. Right? You get first. You get some. I just flow over it just to give you an impression how the report is. I cannot go into detail for every position because I have only 12 minutes left. And uh, you get some information about each database, hit rates, uh, the sizes, the fetches, all this kind of stuff. You get um, some I.O. statistics, each backend process, which is pretty helpful. You get some uh, timing statistics. Statement statistics, cluster overall, and wall statistics. You know everything is out of the Postgres instance itself. Then about the table spaces and actually, now my dark history coming back. The wait events, right? That is really helpful to see. You know, if you don't have any clue uh, what happens on the database, uh, and when someone calls and say yesterday evening it was slow. You can just create a report and you can actually see, uh, you know, sorted uh, for statements, for uh, everything and backend process as well. So you can actually see 
what, what causes the weight in this hour? You know, in this um, it was always lock, lock, uh, locking because PG bench, you know. And, uh, but if you have, so for example, like something what I have in the, in the first slide without with having I.O. stuff in it, you can easily identify what was basically a problem at this hour, causing weight in the, in, in the sessions, right? So that is, Oracle people are actually using that all the time. In my history, when uh, I had performance problems, the first step was creating a report Looking in this, it has something similar in the, in the, post, in the Oracle world, uh, just the top five or top ten weight events, and you have a first impression what was exactly the issue. Really, really helpful. And then you can, can go further in the statement based analysis and so on. And regarding statement base, we have now the top SQL statements out of PG start statements in this time frame. That is the beauty against uh, PG start statements only. So you now have the situation in this time, not overall what PG start statement is getting you. It is sorted by several ways. It's now sorted by execution time. You also get uh, by executions. Then I think block fetch is the next one. Just sorted for several uh, top lists, right? It's the same situation, but on different perspectives. And you just can click on the statement, you will actually get the statement, right? So it's all there. Um, yeah, a lot of, oh. Going further, a lot of lists, right? About wall, user time. Another helpful thing is, after the long report, some object statistics as well. What I'm using a lot is, in a matter of time, somewhere below, there's a lot of information in there. Um, when you go in the GitHub page of PG Profile, there you can just download an example report like this. If you don't want to create one, I can also provide this one, but uh, if you want to watch of your own now, just go to the GitHub page and you can just see an example. You can just dig into it and discuss with me outside. And um, where it really helpful is, um, it's also creating a situation about the configuration of the database. So you will get the actual configuration in this particular time frame. So if there is some kind of, a, a, you know, a lazy Oracle, uh, Postgres DBA doing some changes never mentioned to anyone, and that will cause a performance problem. You will actually see this here. So you can just control uh, when I do uh, some kind of investigation. Um, what was the configuration at this time frame and what was the situation in this time frame? Also pretty helpful to have this information just in one place, right? Yeah. And um, then I have also the differential report. Just give you an impression out of this. You know, it's the same way, same kind of report, so I don't have to scroll all down, but it will put the information for both time frames next to each other. So you can just scroll down and see for uh, every table, for every um, information part here, what was the situation on this time frame and on this time frame, which is for comparison uh, reasons very helpful. If you use a typical example, yesterday uh, noon it was slow, and you then can just create a report yesterday and the day before, and just putting next to each other and see uh, both pictures. And uh, maybe you see the same uh, load, and it wasn't slow, so it was not uh, Postgres at all. So it maybe it's a different uh, issue, network whatsoever. Right? So that is uh, also some helpful. You can watch your own. I just give you an impression, in a matter of time. Pretty nice reports. There's the reports you have to create for your own, but I would recommend to have a, a good way to create the snapshot, the samples, automatically. Switching back to the presentation. Here we go. You know, you can also, y the, the, the commands are really uh, 
straightforward. You know, I have created a server in the demo. You can, of course, enable, disable one if you just want to get it, not drop it. You want to just to disable it, you can do this. You can uh, drop the servers as well as the same command. Taking samples, I, I showed in a in 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 demo, right? You can show samples. Um, best practice is probably, I would start in kind of 30 minute interval. That is what I used to have. But you know, it depends upon to you. You can use every hour. You can also kind of uh, switch it for, for several minutes. It's up to you. You can also create uh, manual uh, samples all the time. And I would recommend to use the baselines a lot because, you know, this example was easy, but if you have uh, hundreds of uh, uh, samples in there, just give it a name. Or if for I have seen examples like um, uh, there was a bulk load or there uh, was a, uh, an interface switch, you know, that, that kind of things. You can just tag it, and some when are there problems afterwards, you can just find the snapshots, the relevant snapshots, quite easy. Perfect. Um, again, putting it to cron, that is the obvious choice just to, to create the snapshots. Um, yeah, baselines, I explained it already. That is how to make them. That's the command from the standard report, just a recap that you, have, that you have seen in the demo, that you can get the commands out of the slides. You don't have to read this, but uh, I want to show that you don't need to rely only on the samples. The cool thing of po PG Profile is, that it's still a repository database for all your performance information. You can feel free to query it, to use it as you wish, right? You can just, uh, it's, it's no magic in there. It's not, not like it's complicated uh, structured. You can just find all the PG start statement information, for instance, tagged with timestamps, which is pretty helpful. So you can just use it for your own analysis, for monitoring uh, metric collections whatsoever. That's all there, and it is uh, also kind of a way to get this sustainable again. Not only for creating this fancy reports, also have uh, uh, the performance analysis information in one place, proper collected. Um, there are some other things like uh, you can uh, create retentions. You know, you can let uh, uh, samples automatically uh, dropped. You know, when you just want to collect for let's say 100 samples or samples maximum a month. Um, you can put, you can do it globally and for each server, of course. And you can measure the data growth quite easy, like this. It's also no PG profile command. It's just checking the scheme size, right? And uh, you can see how it will grow, and you can just uh, make your own choice: is it enough data or not? Um, yeah, that's basically it. My two cents out of it. Again, extensibility is a benefit, not a workaround. That is a sentence I always say to Oracle people, making uh, well, struggling with. I don't. I want to have everything in there. I don't want to use some plugins for this. That's philosophy of Postgres. So extensions are there and they are good. It's a very clean and pragmatic way. It's not an extension where I am worrying about installing it in production because there is no dangerous thing in there. It's, 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 you know, it's open source, it's PLPG SQL, and it's pragmatic. You can put it in a other database as well, so there will be no uh, effect in your production also. Um, it's the best approach I have seen so far. I have no idea if there's anything else in the Postgres world doing exactly that. If you know something, please tell me. But it's working fine, right? And it's not exactly the same what Oracle doing in a matter of content. If you have you seen an automatic workload repository report out of Oracle, it's way bigger. But op honestly, with me being an Oracle DBA for a few years, the information I took out of these reports are also in there, in the PG profile reports, the important part. So there is no need for having more, actually. That's fine, right? Um, what's missing? I'm not really happy to put that in cron all the time. I would like to have something automatically in the extensions, but it's not, you know, it's not that bad, but I would like to have this. Um, you know, with me working at Ivan, I would wish something like this in some DBAS offerings, right? There's discussions going on. <laughs> 
uh, or uh, having this in Contrib, you know, because Contrib is more trustful for a lot of database uh, users, right? And there's even room to have more stuff in this. You have seen uh, already very detailed reports. So there are a lot of things, ideas you can put in. So the PG weight sampling part is actually quite new for a year now, which would, you know, that did make me happy, very. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Thanks for attention. If you have questions, of course. That's quick. I would like to know if it is possible to get uh, the value of the bind variable in the SQL query, the bind variable. Yeah. Is it possible to, have the, to get the value of the bind variable? Does pgstat statement has it in it? Um, then I don't no. know. No. No? OK. <laughs> it's relying on the extensions pgstat statement. So when pgstat statement is not doing this, it will also not appear in the pro in a pro in a report, right? Um, well, my question uh, is: uh, there was it looks really nice. There's one thing which just seemed to I, maybe I just you went over that screen a little bit fast. But for the individual state SQL statements, you'd have your top three SQL statements. Can you see the weight events they have? Because that's quite key for troubleshooting. It's not in the report, but it's in the information. The report will also only create a overall weight event situation of this particular report. But if you need uh, the weight event information of a particular statement, you have to drill in, in the repository cool. or in the PG weight sampling. Uh, uh, the PG weight sampling is actually helping you with this. OK. And if I may just go back to the bind variable question. Uh, Oracle does sample bind variables, uh, but it's, a, it's not a great thing in Oracle because it doesn't give you the bind variables for the slow executions in my experience. I prefer the way Postgres does it. Slow executions are put in the Postgres log, and you get the bind variables for the problem executions, and I find that a lot more powerful. That's true. There was more of a comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Another question. <laughs> What's the resource proof, uh, footprint of this uh, package? I will not guarantee anything, but the installations I have created and seen no, not at all. You know, I would always prefer on large, ins uh, large uh, environments put that into an own database just to make it uh, rock solid, right? But, you know, it's just collecting a few information. It's not... If you have performance problems with this, you have a, uh, another problem, I guess. Well, the PG Badger and uh, all the logging, uh, that was too much uh, uh, footprint for our environments. So it's because very happy, snappy, uh, small S uh, SQLs and uh, with messaging, and uh, the logging to a file was already to having uh, uh, interfering already too much. So yeah, that's correct. And it's different with PG Profile. You see, I have created plenty of snapshots, and it was uh, you know I did a load test, and I was always like uh, a few hundred megabytes when I have really a lot report, uh, not report samples in it, right? And uh, when you have log, and you have a retention way to, to, to use this, right? So in, 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 in with the logging, you have to do the retention for your own, right? Or have to create a f uh, uh, log files overriding each other, you know? But uh, the overall load is way less with uh, something like this instead of using log files and PG Badger. But again, I like PG Badger, I use it often, but it is more heavy to, uh, to activate it instead of this. And you have also create, look, dig in the files, right? And there you have all information in a database to query. It's more easy then. All right, two more quick questions. Hello. Um, Hello. You asked for other similar tools. Uh, and there is actually POWA, Postgres Workload Analyzer which is uh, doing uh, most of uh, these uh, reports, but as a web application, and that uh, includes an uh, automated uh, snapshot inside, mm -hmm. so without a uh, cron tab. And you might work with one guy of the team, of the POWA team, uh, which is uh, working at Haven as well. It's uh, Ronan Dinclos. Is it so? <laughs> so uh, have, a look at, uh, have a look at POWA. <laughs> 
I remember Pova as a more uh, monitoring way approach, and I'm not. I wasn't sure that Pova is still there and developed and maintained. Okay, I, but I will check it out. Thanks. Hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, to install the PG profile extension, you must install in the production data uh, production cluster or in the repository cluster. No, ah, good point. I think it's not so mentioned in the slide. Um, the PG profile extensions has to be activated in the uh, instance where the repository database is. Everything else is going with DBLink. So fetching information, so you don't need the exten extension being on the uh, related database, right? It's because, but you then you have to make sure you can also create the reports on the on the instance where the repository database is. But that's obvious, right? Excellent. Well, thank you, Derek. We don't have time for any more questions. Uh, and this is your yeah. Thanks.